This is Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com. Today we're working on an 03 Nissan Murano 3.5. The car was brought to us by someone who had just bought it. After they bought it, the check engine light came on. I've had many requests on scanner and lab scope use. So today we're going to show you how to use the scanner and the lab scope to diagnose this problem. Of course, you know the first thing we have to do is enter the vehicle, 2003 Nissan Murano. We've got that in there, we're going to go to the scanner. Once in the scanner, we're going to check engine. I'm going to go to codes, I'm going to do codes only. Our codes, PO345, CAM position sensor problem bank 2. Now exactly what does that mean? Okay, right from here we're going to leave that as it is, and I'm actually going to minimize it. And I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. going to maximize that. Now my particular information system is all data so I'm going to go to all data select the vehicle I've already got this entered 2003 Nissan it's a P code select the P code I'm going to scroll down until we get to P0345 PO345. Now you need to gather information. Your information source, as you scroll down here, there's all kinds of information about this. I'm not going to take the time to show that to you. You need to do that on your own. Now, another thing we can do is we can actually minimize this. We bring up the Varus again. We can go into the component test. So I come out of this, I want to go into component test. We're going to import a Nissan and its fuel injection. The same thing, Murano. Now, since we have a cam sensor problem, I'm going to go into the cam sensor. I'm going to open up the cam sensor, go to component information. The same thing, this is going to tell you about this component. It says it's a three wire connector, one is the ground two is the sensor and three is your ignition plus. As we scroll down here it says that there's a cam sensor one and a cam sensor two. It's a V6 engine. There's one on each side. After we read about the component information we're going to go to tests. Now I'm going to do a signature test. When I click on this it's going to tell me the same thing about the connector should use a lab scope and our signal should look like this. The waveform should look like this. This is a square wave for a known good cam sensor. Okay, now that we've got our component information, we know we got a cam sensor problem. Let's go see if we can find the data. Let's go back to scanner, click on engine, and go to data. There's two, two groups of data. We're going to go to data number one. Now all the data for data number one is listed over here. We can scroll down here. We're going to scroll down there and look for a cam sensor. I've already reviewed all this and there's no cam sensor PID or data information on engine data number one. So we're going to exit that. We're going to go to engine data number two. This is a different set of data but we're finding the same thing. There is no data PID that we can look at under engine data 1 or 2. So at this point the scan tool is not going to be much help to us. We're going to have to actually go to the lab scope. So we've gathered our information either through your information source or actually the information that's on the scan tool. Now it's time to actually go out to the component and test it. Okay we want to know where that cam sensor is so I'm going to go back to all data and I'm going to go into the search button over here. I'm going to type in camshaft and it's going to come over here and tell me the camshaft options I'm going to go to camshaft position sensor and I'm going to go down to locations now here's our locations now this is awful tiny print you probably can't read it on the video but as you can see this is the front nose of the vehicle it's a V6 engine. We've got a cam position sensor located right here for this bank. 
and we've got another cam position sensor located right here for the back bank. Our code is for bank 2 which is this cam sensor so we know where to go look. Now the cam sensor for this bank is right up here. We've already tapped into that wire with a wire probe and that lead comes out so that I can take this to my lab scope. We're going to view our meter and the meter comes up. This is a four channel lab scope. You'll see we got yellow, green, blue and red. That corresponds to the top. Yellow, green, blue and red. We're going to use the yellow which is channel one. So I'm going to go to the top of the scope and I'm going to plug my black lead into the ground the common. Now you'll notice here there's two. One has a flattened top, the other one makes it so you can actually piggyback another lead into that. So for right now I'm going to put that one into the ground and put the yellow in the yellow lead. We take the black, we put it to the battery negative. What I like to do before I do any testing is make sure my leads are actually going to read right. So I'm going to take my yellow lead and hook it up to the battery positive. Now you see we're reading 12.12 volts. And if you look down at the yellow trace, there's 0 volts to 12 volts. So we're showing 12 volts. That means my leads, I verified that my leads are actually hooked up right and working. So now I take this off of the battery and I hook it up to the lead that is probed into that wire. Now we're reading 9.8 volts. So now we're tapped into the cam sensor. Let's start the car. Okay, we've got a signal here of some kind, but it's not real good to see yet. We're reading 1.9 volts, but I want to see this. All I'm seeing is the top. So you can come over here and you can drag this trace upward. And now you can see the top, the bottom from the top. We've got a good steady baseline and we've got a good waveform. Go back to your information system, that will explain this waveform and tell you that it's a good waveform. Now our complaint was the cam position sensor number two had a fault. Right now we don't see a fault. We don't want to jump to conclusions here because sometimes problems are intermittent. So we're going to let this run for a while and just see what happens. Now as you can tell we were hooked up to that signal and we actually had a good signal. We started the car several times and we let it run for a while and the signal dropped out. So as you can see we've got no voltage here. We're reading no voltage and no signal. So you might tap into this at a time when that sensor is actually sending a signal and then you might tap into it when it's actually dropped out and it would look like this. So let's say that that's the case. You got a cam sensor too that's dropped out and you tap into it like this and you have no voltage. Now we actually started this car several times, brake torqued it, revved the engine up, we kept the signal up so we let it sit here for a while, let the temp engine get up to normal operating temperature and then shortly after that it actually died and this is the signal that we're looking at after it died. Now if you just happened to tap into this at the very beginning and this is what you were seeing, you wouldn't know if that was good or bad. Now we've got two cam sensors on here, so let's actually compare to the second cam sensor. Now the cam sensor for the back bank is located back here. We've done the thing, same thing. We've tapped into that wire and I've got a lead now so that we can actually look at the back cam sensor as well. So I'm going to put the second cam sensor on the second trace. I'm going to use my green leads. Go up here and plug into the green. Now you see why we piggyback the common. Over here we can piggyback the black on there and both commons are hooked up. Now we're going to take our green alligator clip and we're going to hook it up to the lead coming off of the back cam sensor. Now you go over to the green lead, we've got it all hooked up. I want to verify that this lead is good. Now this is why I like to do this. 
we're hooked up to the cam sensor in the back, it should be reading. I'm reading no voltage. Now, let's first see if our lead is good. So I'm going to take it loose here. I'm going to hook my lead up to the battery. I'm hooked up to the battery. I'm still reading no voltage. Now this is why you need to do this so you can make sure you won't waste a lot of time. This lead needs to be turned on. We're on the yellow trace. So you need to go up here to traces. You'll see I'm on trace one which is yellow. It's set for 20 volts and it's checked displayed. Let's go to trace number two which is our green trace. It is not displayed so I'm going to check displayed to display it and I'm going to change this down to 20 volts which is the same as the other one was. And hit OK and OK. Now you can see that I'm reading 13.9 volts so I'm reading battery voltage. So I've just confirmed that my battery leads so I've just confirmed that my lab scope leads are actually hooked up and working. Now that we've verified that our leads are working I'm going to disconnect from the battery it's going to go down to zero volts and I'm going to connect to the alligator clip that's on cam 2. Now as soon as I do that you can see we've got a signal coming from cam 2 and it's green. I want to move this so I can see it a little bit better so I'm going to drive this second one up a little bit higher. Now remember cam 1 was the yellow trace and we're still reading zero. Cam 2 is the green trace or the cam sensor on bank 1 and you can see our voltage. So now we're going to change that cam sensor and then verify our repair. So this is how to use your lab scope when you want to look at two things. We're going to use two channels that we happen to have two cam sensors. Now if you happen to have a car that only has one cam sensor and you don't have a second one to compare it to, then you'd basically do the same procedure but you'd only, you only have one signal. So if you hook up to it and that signal is actually working and it's there, you'd have to do what we did, let it run for a while so forth until it drops out. Try and catch it dropping out. If you hook up to it and there's no signal, you need to verify that your, your tool is set up right, hook it up to the battery, make sure your leads are actually reporting, make sure that you're tapped into the right wire, and you have to rely on your equipment. If there's no signal from that cam sensor, then that cam sensor is bad. A scanner and a lab scope can give you a lot of information, but it's only as good as you know how to use that tool, as you know how to navigate around your lab scope. So if you don't have a lab scope, you're not going to be able to tap into the sensor and actually see what it's doing. You're not going to be able to gather the evidence. You're not going to be able to confirm what is actually going on with that sensor. And your only alternative is guesswork. Thank you.